Um, apart from going to a past life hypnotherapist, if you've got any kind of problem that happens in my life, I, I intuit what is the karma that I've done to others in past lifetimes. Rather than go to a past, yeah. rather than go to a, uh, a hypnotherapist and give them 150 quid to take me back into a past life, I, you know, everything that happens to me, everything that everyone does to me uh, that I don't like, I intuit what I've done to others in a past lifetime. Okay, and I'll give you some examples. I'll give you some of Hawkins' examples because they very, very clearly make you recognize past life karma and the prayer you need to do to release that karma. Mm -hmm. So you can just automatically figure it out. And, and most of the times you, you'll be near enough there. Okay, so Hawkins had the thing where um, he went into surgery for a hernia operation and, uh, and they were cutting him open and he had excruciating pain and he wasn't able to transcend it. And then he had a flashback to a past lifetime. Uh, like no, normally he'd be able to transcend that, but he didn't. And then he had a flashback to a past lifetime of a time when he was in, in the war and he skewered someone in the groin, I don't know, with a sword or a spear or something. And he didn't finish them off. And he had the guilt of not having the soldier's conduct of finishing them off and letting them suffer from that wound in that, in that era. And that guilt of, I didn't finish him off, I left him to suffer his wound, stayed as a karmic package within his, uh, within his field. So this time, life orchestrated itself so that he would get to experience the pain that he had inflicted on another. And he would, one way to undo karma is to experience experientially what you've done to another. It does it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So imagine having been skewered in the groin and then left there without being finished off. So he got to f feel what it'd be like to be skewered in the groin and uh, to experience that uh, through an operation. So like if I suddenly had like heavy f feel like someone was crushing my feet, you know, I'd probably say that I probably did crush someone's feet in a past lifetime. So I'd then pray for forgiveness for the one in me who crushed the feet uh, of, of someone else in, 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 or crushed the feet of, of others in this lifetime and past lifetimes. You know, I probably, you know, I've had a lot of throat problems. I probably think, you know, I'm probably like, I was probably like the, the local strangler, I don't know. <laughs> I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who like would... <laughs> would strangle people in the middle of the night, you know, with vent or, or, a cat, or, you know, or it could be, you know, like you see with the chakras, they have certain messages. I pray for the one in me who inflicted pain on others with my voice in this lifetime and past lifetime. So you can, you can, um, you can intuit, like if something happens to you, just feel what is it that's been done to me, or can I try and imagine why I would get to experience that? Has someone like, you know, uh, you know, I was in one of my sales jobs, let's say I wasn't that nice or I was quite salesy. I have to go on camera. So I'm, like, <laughs> I'm on camera. Let's say I was, I was pretty, a little bit of a naughty salesperson. Okay, I can't really say more than that on camera. But uh, I remember coming off, uh, coming off and starting my spiritual work. And I thought there was this great offer uh, for around, around you know, something uh, related to the type of work I was doing, which was financial. And it was like, they, they gave my phone number to bloody every single company in the whole world. And I got like all these people calling me up left, right and centre, and you couldn't get them off the phone. And, and it was like my, my, my number was on every single list, you know, for, for everyone. It was like, and that was my, that's what I was like to other people. You couldn't get me off the phone mm. and I'd bully you and trying to get you to do the thing I wanted you to do. I was like a pain in the ass. Yeah. And then I was like, had these people like phoning me and I couldn't, you know, and I was on every single list, you know, and I had to like, you know, try and be, and it's like, oh, you know, why did that happen? That, and I knew that wasn't, that was fair. You know, God bless these people. And, uh, and it was me. I was seeing what I did to others. I was paying off my karma through getting it, you know. But here's the way you, you undo it. 
you guess what you've done to others, mm -hmm. and you pray for forgiveness. This is the anti, what I call Hawkins' anti-karma prayer. When you feel you've been unjustly treated or someone has stepped on your toes, or you find people always step on your toes, you know, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who in this lifetime, past lifetime, steps on other people's toes. Sometimes this can be metaphoric, you know, like if you've got a pain in the neck. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's been a pain in the neck to others in this lifetime, past lifetimes. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's been a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. In this life, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's ripped people off in this lifetime and past lifetimes. I pray for the one in me who, out of jealousy, has taken people down in this lifetime or sabotaged other people's careers in this lifetime and past lifetimes. I pray for, you know, so when these things are done unto me, um, then I intuit you know, as an anti-karma prayer that I'll start praying forgiveness. What symbolically has th is this situation doing to me? How have I symbolically done that? Could I have done this? You know, what about being exhausted? You know, have I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's been, who's exhausted other people to death mm. in this lifetime and past lifetimes. I've been so demanding and so awful that other people have nearly died with exhaustion having to deal with me. So I pray for forgiveness for, for the one in me. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's just been, a, you know, who's just been toxic to other people in this lifetime. You know, I had like a kidney failure, toxic blood, you know, a feeling, feeling of like I'm being, you know, like kidney failure is like you feel you're exhausted and you're full of toxins. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's been just toxic to others in this life. So you start to see there's messages in what's coming to you from, from, and actually, for me, nothing comes to me, nothing is unfair. Mm. And that, for me, is really helpful. I don't know, it might be very intimidating to, to, to other people. But when people, you know, I don't see that, it really helps me to see that, you know, I'm actually just, you know, Hawkins made a joke about it. I thought it was really funny because he's got a great sense of humor. Mm. He says, like, if you're married to someone and they, they leave with a younger man, and with your Mercedes, just say that pays that one off. <laughs> and have a laugh. Just, just paid off the karma you did, you know, with being, you know, leaving your wife in the past lifetime and taking the carriage with you or the horse with you. <laughs> so you just paid that one off and go, good, I've let that one go. So, so those are ways of. Uh, sorry, it's a bit of a heavy talk today, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love it. But he talks about sense of humour being so important. Yeah, yeah, a sense of humor. Yeah. You laugh, laugh it off. Yeah. You're just paying off this, or, you know, you know. So there are all of these ways of yeah. seeing, you know, like, you know, if I've suddenly got a pain in the neck, or I've suddenly got like, feel like my feet are being crushed, you know, or, or you can just pray to the Holy Spirit to reveal mm. the the meaning of of the lesson or the karma, mm. or pray to the Holy Spirit to what is the message. You know, I feel like I've got a bat, bat, a pain in my neck every day. Uh, I pray to the Holy Spirit to reveal to me, to impress upon my mind, uh, the lesson or the, or the message I need to learn uh, and to transcend with this pain in my neck. And you just keep saying that prayer every day. And you just expect that in some form the answer will be revealed to you when the time is right. Or, you, or automatically you'll be guided into, even without knowing it, into doing things that would be releasing that, as you'd be orchestrated to release that. You don't need to know, but, uh, but you, to transcend something, you don't need to know. You just need to let go of the meaning that you're identifying with it until it's meaningless. And you, dis you disappear. I like disappearing stuff. You don't have to pay a hypnotherapist, you don't have to know what to do. Because nothing, you see, you only experience stuff that, you, that your ego s sees as special that it tracks. Otherwise there is no world, there is no time, there is no people, there is no me and you in this room, there is no death, there is no illness, uh, there is no suffering. But whatever I track, I experience, so if you transcend it, you don't experience it and it doesn't exist for you. Uh, so you don't have to go to a therapist, you don't have to talk to a therapist and go to your childhood and go, what, what happened to you at three, and what's the meaning of that when you were three years old. Mm. You don't have to do all of that stuff. 